What's the significance of the CP? The lower the breath hold time, the greater the breathing volume. If the control pause is less than 20 seconds, the main symptoms are present, such as blocked nose, snoring, insomnia, fatigue, coughing, wheezing, breathlessness, exercise-induced asthma. A control pause of less than 20 seconds indicates relatively heavy breathing. You know, obje our objective is to get the control pause up to 40 seconds. A CP of between 20 to 40 seconds, the main symptoms are gone. The person will feel quite a lot better, but a trigger could produce symptoms. Stress could produce it if there's a lot of pollen or whatever their trigger is. You know, it could bring on symptoms. However, the higher the control pause, the less the effect that the trigger has. And the goal is a CP of 40 seconds, and very rarely will you have symptoms. So the essential rules to make progress is that the client will feel better each time their control pause increases by five seconds. So if, if your client comes into you and their CP is 10 seconds, well, tell them, you know, you're going to feel better when your CP increases to 15. So there we have a step-by-step -step motivation as opposed to saying, oh, your control pause is 10 seconds and we really need you to get up to 40. To bridge that gap is too much, you know, like the client may feel it's an impossible task. My control pause is 10 seconds and I need to be at 40. It's literally impossible. So step by step, we gently increase the CP. The control pause, if it doesn't change, the client isn't going to feel better. That's ultimately it. You know, sometimes, okay, clients feel better and their control pause hasn't increased, but ultimately we do need the control pause to raise. During the first few weeks, the control pause will increase by three to four seconds. And then when it reaches 20 seconds, it'll often get stuck there and it can remain stubborn at 20 seconds for a number of weeks. The best way to shift a stubborn control pause is physical exercise. And also the best way to maintain a good control pause is physical exercise. In other words, you know, in, in bringing this into our way of life, we have to start doing physical exercise to maintain good breathing volume. And probably a large part of why our breathing is dysfunctional in the first place is that modern life, we're sitting at desks since we've been a young child and we end up maybe working in offices. Again, we're sitting at desks all day and it can have effect on breathing. And in addition to that, of course, there's stress and everything else. The most accurate control pause is taken first thing in the morning and the CP is taken throughout the day will give you feedback of your breathing at that time. So usually, you know, four o'clock in the afternoon is generally the, seems to be the best time that a person will have a higher CP, that their breathing is lighter. And the goal is to have a morning CP of 40 seconds for six months. So the factors that slow down CP progress are obesity, um, if we have a large amount of fat, you know, excess fat, it can slow down our CP growth. So the other aspect is that when we do the reduced breathing, the individual will often feel um, a reduced appetite. So they may find it an easier way to lose weight, that they're not on this yo-yo dieting all the time because we're helping to restore normal metabolic functioning. And with that, normal food, you know, normal food consumption with that as well. Unable to handle stress. If you have somebody and they're constantly under stress and they're not able to deal with it, well, their progress is going to be slower because their stress is counteracting the effects of the reduced breathing. However, I would still encourage them to continue doing the reduced breathing because doing the exercise are a great way to handle stress. Um, the whole aspect is that the individual needs to be able to sense their breathing. Sometimes with anxiety and stress that the person is so disconnected you know, they're so stuck in their mind that it can take a while for them to take their attention out of the mind onto the breath, but it's well worth, you know, continuing with it and putting in the effort to make that change. Chronic infection, um, tonsillitis, you know, these again can hamper, hamper progress. If an individual has a, a sickness for a long time, if they've had asthma for 30 years, it will take them Generally, to make a full recovery, it will take them one year for every 10 years that they've had their sickness. So the longer the person has had the condition, the longer the time it takes to get a, a reasonably high CP. Now, in saying that, they will still feel a lot better every time their CP increases by five seconds. So even if somebody comes into me and their CP is 10 seconds, they've had asthma for 40 years, I'm still going to say, listen, you'll feel so much better anyway in a short period of time, two to three weeks, 
So it's not that you have to wait four years, that you will actually get quite quick progress quickly. And asthma is one of the, the easier conditions to work with, easier to make progress. Greater severity of sickness, somebody who's very sick, again, you're dealing with the sickness, that can hamper and slow down CP growth. But as I said earlier on, continue working with it because each time the CP increases, the sickness will be decreasing, of course, depending on the sickness. I'm not saying it's a cure-all, but conditions that are related to chronic hyperventilation, this is certainly a very, very good solution for that. There is a relationship between breathing volume and CP. When we look at somebody coming into us with a CP of 10 seconds, and I look at their breathing, I would see noticeable amplitudes. Um, I'd see the breath in, I'd see the breath out. It's often in the chest. There's no natural pauses between breaths. Invariably, they would be probably mouth breathers. You know, they may sigh every now and again. So they have noticeable breathing. So it's noisy, it's loud, it's irregular, large, heavy, erratic, and effortful. This individual will feel breathless during physical exercise. Um, and can you imagine when the CP is five seconds, the individual is really, really struggling for breath. They're constantly fighting for air. There's no natural pauses, you know, because it's just one breath after another. When the CP reaches 20 seconds, we get the first natural pause between breath. Here, the breathing is becoming more calmer. It's becoming more lighter. We've got a natural pause of about one second between breath. And the individual at this point will feel better, easier to sustain physical exercise, easier to sustain speech, and um, better for singing, for example. Breathing will be lighter during sleep. Breathing will, be breathing will be lighter and sleep will be deeper. When the CP comes up to 30 seconds, again, we're getting incremental improvements. That breathing is becoming lighter. The natural pause is becoming longer. The amplitude of the breath is becoming lighter as well. So here, the respiratory rate is also reducing. So the breath itself overall is becoming softer, easier and effortless. And that's what's constituting good breathing. And of course, at 40 seconds, the same again. You know, at 40 seconds, the breathing is very calm, quiet and unnoticeable. And the respiratory rate at this point may be just six to eight breaths per minute. So the three steps to increase the control pause. And of course, the control pause, as I said earlier, it's a measurement of progress. Step one is the foundation is stop big breathing. You know, it's really about restoring nasal breathing on a permanent basis, both during the day and also during sleep. The second aspect of that is to avoid yawning with big breaths. I'm not saying don't yawn, but try not to take the big breath with the yawn. Because oftentimes you'll find that people with dysfunctional breathing, they have disrupted sleep, they're tired, they're yawning a lot during the day, and each time they yawn, they're taking this big breath of fresh air. And that's only helping to reinforce their chronic hyperventilation. And that was something that I remember doing as a teenager, constantly yawning, constantly fatigued, etc. A sigh is another thing. You know, avoid the sigh, because we know that one sigh every seven to eight minutes um, is enough to maintain chronic hyperventilation. One big breath affects the body for about seven minutes. So all we have to do is to have that one big breath every few minutes, and it will keep us in a permanent state of chronic hyperventilation and dysfunctional breathing. Step two is practicing the reduced breathing exercise, which I will go through. And that again is to help reset the respiratory center in the brain to a more physiological normal volume of breathing. And step three is physical exercise with correct breathing. So we use step one and step two to help the CP increase to 20 seconds. And then we use step three to bring the CP from 20 to 40 seconds. So ultimately the goal is a CP of 40 seconds and physical exercise is the best way to get from 20 to 40. And physical exercise is the best way to maintain it there.